Today, I want to show you my way of achieving complex fantasy colors at home. I have all my tools laid out before I begin. I have plastic gloves, a hairbrush, pre-cut foils about four inches wide, and a piece of thin cardboard. I'll have small rubber bands, a tail comb, duckbill clips, bowls, and color application brushes. And finally, I have a rag towel, three different semi-permanent fantasy colors, a spray bottle filled with water, and a flat iron. First, I brush out my half-grown-out gray with platinum ends. My techniques get me a vibrant yet diffused root without hard color lines. I take a tail comb and draw a zigzagged horizontal parting all the way around my head from temple to temple. I next clip my top hair out of the way. I'll divide the lower area into five vertical zigzagged sections. The first ones will be over my ears. I draw a zigzag section Then I tease its base. This avoids hard color lines. I elevate the section and pull it toward my hairline. Elevation helps further diffuse the color over the background. I place a tight rubber band just beyond the teasing. I'll repeat this all the way round, banding the ponytails high. I have one ponytail on each side and three in the back. I'm leaving out a slice at the nape for an accent. Moving to the top, I first zigzag out my fringe area. I tease the root and band it directly over where I part my hair. This makes sure the diffused accent will be closer to the scalp and over my focal point. I pull up my remaining top hair and I make three separate zigzag parted sections radiating from the fringe section. I'll tease each of these sections and pull them toward my face before banding. This guarantees that the colors diffuse into the roots of my hair. I now look very silly indeed, but the most important work is done. Pre-sectioning and banding makes the color application much easier. I'll start my color application on the loose slice of hair at the nape. I now sequester the non-working sections away from my application point. I've learned the hard way that semi-permanent colors stain. Don't let them go where you don't want them to. Now I take my thin piece of cardboard and fold the narrow edge of a foil over its top. I'll be using two duckbill clips to hold the cardboard and foil close to my scalp. 
This allows me to use both hands later when applying the color. I don my plastic gloves. And I spritz this section with water. Water helps gel-based colors spread through the hair more easily. I comb out my section for control. And I paint on my first color, blue. The viscosity of the gel color helps the hair stick to the foil. Now I can remove the clips and paint a little further up. I fold my foil up into thirds. The cardboard gives me more support. I fold the sides of the packet inward so that the foil doesn't slip out. I wipe my hands often and every time I change colors. If I don't, I'll get color contamination or blotching in my next foil. Now I'll work my way around my head with the foil on cardboard and clips. I'm alternating fuchsia and orange on my lower hair. Because my complexion is naturally quite pink, I want fuchsia near my face, not orange. An odd number of ponytails assures that I will have pink on both temples. I roll up and fold the foil and move to the other side. Now I'll apply orange to the next pair of ponytails. As I round the curvature of my head, I sometimes find it easier to apply the gel with my fingers, provided I keep my hands clean. Eventually, I roll up the foil and move on to the other side. At this angle, even the cardboard feels awkward, so I just dip my fingers in color and work it into the ponytail. But when using my fingers to apply color, I must keep my hands as clean as possible and away from other sections. I'll lay a foil lengthwise under the ponytail and fold it up, making sure that it's secure and sealed. The backmost lower ponytail will be fuchsia, so the alternation is complete. With the lower foils done, I'll start the top. I'll saturate my fringe area with blue, so I have a cooler, contrasting color over my parting. This also echoes the blue foil in the nape.
For the last three foils, I'll return to the cardboard assist because it keeps me from accidentally dripping colors onto my scalp. Drips on top would be a real blotchy bummer. Making sure my hands are clean, I apply fuchsia to the center ponytail. and I apply orange to the remaining two. Now it's time to process. Now when I've done this according to manufacturer's directions, I've found that my resistant gray hair comes out too pastel. So I'm gonna run with scissors at my own risk. For maximum penetration and longevity, I tap each foil with a 300 degree Fahrenheit flat iron until the foil is hot to the touch. After thoroughly heating all the foils, I let them cool completely and then rinse them off in the shower. All done. I hope you enjoyed this information, but it comes with fine print. I take no responsibility and accept no liability for any color results, injury, or property damage resulting from your following these procedures at home. You perform any and all home hair colors at your own risk. Read carefully the manufacturer's directions of any colors you use, especially the portions regarding eye contact and first aid. Use hot tools carefully and with discretion, or serious burns may result. Remember, the closer the foils are to your scalp, the higher the danger of steam burns should you decide to heat them with your flat iron. It is safest to process them cold. Semi-permanent colors usually wash out after 6 to 14 shampoos, but blue-based tones and fluorescents may fade very slowly or be difficult to chemically remove. Your choice, your risk. Now for some handy tips. For the most vivid results, your hair must be bleached or naturally white before application of vivid semi-permanent colors. Any pre-existing hair colors, artificial or natural, will affect your results. Semi-permanent colors really stain. Towels and clothing may stain permanently, so wear stuff you do not care about and work in a space where splatter won't matter. Dress for success. 
Wear a front opening top so you don't have to drag a shirt over your foils to get into the shower. Have all your tools ready before you start. It's faster and you'll feel less pressured. Wear the darn gloves. Otherwise, your manicure and nails will be stained for a long time. And if a rubber band gets caught in your hair, tap it with a hot curling iron until it breaks. You can then pick the fragments out of your hair easily. Cheers, have fun. One small step for man, one giant leap for